Welcome to the Hills Boring and Historian. My name is Rex. Looks like we can't afford color today, but let's see what the terrier's got on his history on a platter. Today's topic is Slim Whitman. Otis Dewey Whitman Jr. was born in Tampa in 1923. He grew up loving country music, baseball, and fishing. He could match the notes of many country singers, and after high school, he got a job at the local Tampa shipyards. In 1943, Slim joined the Navy and was assigned to the USS Chilton. He was soon in the South Pacific. On board the ship, Whitman found an old guitar and strung it backwards to suit his left-handed style. He entertained his fellow sailors, and one day at dusk, Whitman saw a kamikaze slam into the ship's deck, causing a mast to crash where he had once stood. Whitman believed that God was looking over him. Another twist of fate occurred when orders arrived assigning him to another ship. The captain of the Chilton knew that Petty Officer 3rd Class Whitman was a morale booster for the crew and had the orders changed. It was a fateful decision. The ship that Whitman would have transferred to was sunk in the Battle of Leyte Gulf with all hands lost. After the war in 1948, Whitman began singing on radio stations in the Tampa area. Colonel Tom Parker, who was managing Eddie Arnold at the time, liked Whitman's sound, and he sent an acetate to RCA. The record company changed Whitman's name to Slim Whitman, and I'm Casting My Lasso Towards the Sky became the theme song for the yodeler who was destined to cross many genres. In 1954, a man named Elvis Presley had his first official build performance as an opener for Slim Whitman. Presley and Whitman soon became friends and toured together. At one point, Elvis talked Slim into lending him his coat. In typical Elvis fashion, Elvis threw something into the audience, and Slim never saw his coat again. A year later, Whitman joined the Grand Old Opry and continued on tour. In 1956, Slim was the first American country artist to play at the London Palladium, and tickets were sold out seven weeks in advance. By the 1960s, it seemed that country music was taking a back seat to rock and roll. Ironically, two Beatles complimented Slim. Guitarist George Harrison stated that Slim was an early influence, and a young Paul McCartney also drew inspiration to restring a right-handed guitar for a left-handed player after seeing a picture of how Slim had restrung his guitar. In the 1970s, Slim was still popular in the UK, but was having relatively minor hits in America. He was often a guest on Wolfman Jack's show, The Midnight Special, and in 1979, Suffolk Marketing approached Slim to do a TV commercial for an album. Initially skeptical, Slim did the commercial and was soon fodder for Johnny Carson monologues and SCTV skits. But it was Slim who had the last laugh. Eventually over 4 million copies of the album were sold and Slim was soon a guest on the late night shows that once mocked him. David Letterman even tried on Slim's jacket, and this time, Slim made sure to get his jacket back. It should be noted that Slim's Love Song of the Waterfall was featured on the Close Encounters of the Third Kind soundtrack. And in 1996, the film Mars Attacks features Whitman's rendition of Indian Love Call, which is actually used as a weapon against the alien invaders. It seems the song made the Martians' heads explode. I guess you could say Slim was the bomb. Slim Whitman did retire from singing in 2010 and sadly passed away in 2013, leaving behind a great musical legacy and proving that terriers never give up. He has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and is a member of the Hillsborough High School Alumni Association's Hall of Fame. Well, as they say on Mars, ak ak. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Take care of each other. And as always, go Big Red.